Well hello, my name is Andy Tidy and welcome back to a rather wintry edition of Series 4 Canal Hunter. In this episode we are following the line of the old coal trade route which the last of the Birmingham coal boats followed as they went from the coal fields of Cannock through to their marketplace in Saltley and Small Heath. In the last episode we joined the Tame Valley Canal and we reached the top of the Perry Bar Locks and that's where we rejoin the hunt. And in today's episode we're going to follow the Perry Bar Locks down the hill to beside the River Tame and finally end up at Salford Junction which you'll know better as Spaghetti Junction. Now to the boaters they knew these locks as the New 13 to contrast them to the old 13 which were the Farmers Bridge locks in the centre of Birmingham. And you remember this canal was built as a bypass to relieve the over congestion in central Birmingham. And according to the old boaters ditty the sequence of locks going from the top of Longwood all the way through to Camp Hill was the Moshes 2, the Gansies 7, the New 13 and the Lows 11. So this is the new 13 flight. These 13 locks actually come in three groupings. There are seven here at Perry Park. This is the top lock. Then there are four at College Road and there are finally another two down at the bottom. Overall this flight of 13 locks drops the canal by 106 feet in the space of about a mile and a half. Now, if you've watched the last episode you remember that this was one of the later canals built. It was built in 1844 and the same goes for the canal related buildings which surround the top lock site here. Now these locks were the last to be built here on the BCN and they were the most technically advanced both in terms of how the chambers operated but more importantly how the water was recirculated from the bottom of the locks back up here to the top. This recycling system was driven by a pump right down at the very bottom of the flight and there was a iron pipe map that came all the way up this western side. This top lock used to have a wharf next to it just behind me and that had sidings where the mineral line came in from the Hampstead Colliery and discharged coal into the boats. It also has the gauging warehouse which was the place which controlled the levels of water that went both down and back up the flight of locks. Anyhow let's go down this rather attractive flight of locks and I'll show you what's here today. Don't expect to see any boats in this episode any more than any of the others. This is a very remote bit of canal. If it sees one boat a day in summer that's busy and in winter well I'd be surprised to see any boats moving through here in the space of a month. But these locks are quite beautiful in their own way and if they were in a better setting they would rival the likes of Audlem on the Shropshire Union. Anyhow let's go and have a look and see what we can find. Now this back pumping scheme that existed at the Perry Bar locks was really extensive but virtually all traces of it have been removed. There's a grid house at the bottom where the water was taken in and there's a gauging warehouse up here at the top where the water was regulated as it both flowed down and back up again. There was a big pumping engine between locks 12 and 13 but that's all been removed. There are also two reflux valves which we see and I'll show you the purpose of those when we get there. The old maps also show eight air valves and three washout valves. Now, it's hard to work out exactly how this system works. I've never seen a diagram or a schematic. But as far as I can see there is a washout valve at the bottom of each of the three flights. So they would have been where the flights could be drained back down again and the silt that accumulated in the pipes washed out. A bit like a manhole I guess. And yet I'll see if I can find any lingering remnants of these valves but I rather suspect that they were completely removed when the utility duct was added underneath the towpath.
Lot number five used to have two lock keepers cottages just tucked where the trees are on the side. It also had the eighth air valve for the back pumping scheme. But as you can see, every last trace of both the houses and the back pumping scheme have been erased over the years. And anything that wasn't lost in the 1960s and the 1970s has been swept away to make way for the enlarged Alexander Stadium, which will play host to the 2022 Commonwealth Games here in Birmingham. Now I mentioned at the start that these locks were technologically advanced for their time. And when they made these locks, they wanted to try and make the work for the boaters as simple and as fast as possible. So they came up with a cunning design of hydrology, which would push the bottom gates closed when a boat was moving uphill. And let me show you how this works. Now for this, I do need two bits of kit. I need my Watermate key, which is basically an anti-vandal key to stop yobs coming along and draining the pans, and I need my windlass. Luckily, I've brought them both so you can see this in operation. Sadly, not with a boat. I don't imagine there'll be any boats coming through here for several weeks. But anyhow, let's have a look at this lock in operation. First, we need to disengage the locking mechanism. And then we need to do a bit of winding. So the process is the boat would come in to the lock here, the boatman would climb out, open the top paddles, the water would surge in through these three vents and the bottom one would push against the bottom of the gate and gently swing it closed, saving them the task of running down to close the gates. Anyhow, I'd better get back up to the top of this lock, because as it is, the lock's nearly full, the pound above is emptying, and I'm going to be reducing the water level. If you want to see more evidence of the heavy use of this canal as it moved loads of coal down to the uh, industries of Birmingham, just look at the edges of these paddle gear. This is where the horses dragged on the ropes to pull the boats out of the lock. And you can see all the ground in grooves going down the ironwork. And it's the same story over on the other side, because you'll remember that this canal was built with towpaths on both sides. I have to admit, I wasn't entirely satisfied with the results of my experiment on lock five. So I've come down to lock six and I've set it up with an open bottom gate. So you can imagine that the narrow boat has come into the lock chamber, the boatman has climbed out and we're going to wind up the paddles on this lock and see how it goes. Just below lot number seven, which is the top flight 
of the uh, Perry Bar locks. There is this low brick construction and on it, if you can see it, there is a sign that says the number two reflux valve. In here we can see a number of valves. There is a small valve down here, there's the big valve with a windlass point on here and there is a third valve in the far side. These valves both controlled the water flowing up the hill to replenish the flight of locks. It also had a reflux valve which allowed the water to be drained out from these pans up here back into the bottom pan so that they could do maintenance. So basically it was a water control valve that allowed the flow of water to be reversed when necessary. Now immediately downstream of the reflux valve there is another small brick built structure and this one is on the site of what the maps mark as an air valve. So air could have accumulated in the pipe and then been released out with a valve here. A bit like we do when we bleed the radiators in our central heating systems at home. So there is a little bit more of the back pumping scheme still in existence. How much of the pipes remain underneath this side of the towpath I have absolutely no idea. But it seems likely to me that somewhere underneath this line of snow there is indeed the recirculating pipeline system. Sadly the control mechanism is so filled up with debris and brambles I'm not going to stick my hand in there. But it's certainly another element of the old back pumping system that I'd never actually noticed in my travels. So from here on we start down the second flight of the Perry Bar locks and these ones are at College Road. And this is lock number eight, the first of four at College Road. And standing beside the canal, there is a dormer windowed bungalow. We'll come back to that, just remember that one. Now it's been lovely to receive so many comments on the recent video posts of this fictitious trip carrying coal from the coalfield to Cannock down to the markets in Saltley and Small Heath. But one particular comment last week really stuck in my mind. It was the observation that, oh great Andy, at last you're going to explain how the back pumping system worked on the Perry Bar flight. I have to admit my heart sank because I thought, oh no, I don't really understand it myself. I just know where there are some fragments. Well, it set me on a bit of a mission 
and as much as I can I'm weeding out the telltale remnants of this highly efficient pumping system that kept this set of 13 locks in water. Well one of the problems with trying to research the old back pumping system is an absence of remains. But when I consulted the maps as part of my research, I noticed that here, under the roving bridge which gave access to the Peribar Public Wharf, there was alongside it the sign for an air valve bang in the middle of the branch. Well, now I come to stand on the bridge, look what I find. An absolutely massive section of the back pumping scheme. And here, right bang in the middle, is the air valve in question. Now the valve isn't there but I can put my hand down into the pipe which gives you some idea of the scale of the thing. So I can only assume that the iron pipework ran all the way up from the pumping station at the bottom locks through to the gauging warehouse at the very top. I suspect most of it has been sent off to the scrapper's yard but here is one little fragment which we can still see and appreciate the scale of the pumping endeavour. This pipe has got to be two foot six in, in a diameter. Now there wasn't an awful lot of industry along the Tame Valley Canal, it was very much a connecting canal. But this was one of the few side basins and it went off to the Peribar Wharf. And as you can see, it's spanned by a lovely classic Horsley Ironworks roving bridge built in 1855. And directly opposite Peribar Wharf, there was the Stonehouse Basin. And that came in directly opposite beneath the buildings that are here today. This used to be a major boat building yard. Well, since we've got the boats as far as College Road and as the ice seems to be getting heavier, I think my decision is to pull into the Perry Bar Wharf for the night. I'm going to go and visit my friend Enoch Mason who lives in the cottages right beside the Lockham. Maybe I'll go and have a pint in the Boar's Head. Well, that's the line I'm giving you for the story of the old coal boats moving down through the Perry Bar Locks. The reality is that I've just had to switch over my GoPro battery and that means I've got a lot more footage than I thought. So I'm going to call it to an end at this point here at College Road, lock number 10, and we'll call that the end of the episode. But there's another episode in the can which will take us all the way down to Salford Junction or Spaghetti Junction, depending what area you're working in. So. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Canal Hunter. I'll see you soon. Cheerio.